The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, open your Bibles to 1 Peter 2, verse 15, page 27 of your notes. 1 Peter 2, verse 15. <clears throat> Let's take the customary time to uh, check ourselves with regard to being in fellowship. Uh, generic rebound works. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. And uh, so this is your opportunity to be sure that you are where you need to be under the function of GAP. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we assemble ourselves so we can continue to grow in grace and knowledge and consider the will of God for our lives as believers living before an unbelieving and negative cosmos. Bless our time together in Christ's name. Amen. All right, since we're a royal family, we need to act like royalty. We need to conduct ourselves. People born into royal families were trained to conduct themselves appropriate to their station in life. This is simply an illustration, I'm not saying everything they did was wonderful or anything like that. But we are royalty, and therefore as royalty, we relate ourselves to the external world. One of the areas that we must acclimate to and remember that these believers to whom this was written in the Roman Empire, their rulers, their authorities in the establishment chain of command were typically unbelievers, pagans, and so forth. Christians might get the idea that they don't have to pay attention to them. This is a mistake. The establishment chain of command is very important and we are thankful for those who do it right so that we here as believers can go about our daily lives as well as assemble without disruption and chaos. That's their responsibility. And this is brought out in the verses that lead up to verse 15. We are under the command, the royal command, even though positionally we're in Christ, we're, in, we're better in because of who we are by grace. Nevertheless, we are, in verse 13, submit yourselves to, for the Lord's sake. Do this, do this as unto the Lord. That's like I've always said, you go out there and do your job, you do it as unto the Lord, not as unto people. You're there to please him. There's other statements about this in scripture interaction with other people. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king, that would be the top person. And in the Roman Empire, that was called Caesar. And when this was written, he wasn't a good guy, but he was the Caesar, Nero. Because these Christians were coming under attack as being antinomian, antisocial, uh, because they didn't go back into their uh, pagan religious activities and beliefs. So there was a lot of name calling. They, they, uh, that, that was what they did in reaction to them, which we can understand. But, uh, but we have here given the tactic of how to, handle, how to handle the antagonism that exists in the cosmos. Submit yourselves so they can't say we didn't that we advocated any form of antisocial behavior. Now, if we're not going to go along with your religion, we don't have to do that. We have the Lord as the one responsible. Whatever this the the this, the, the general religion in an area is, the belief system of people. We're we're going with doctrine, but we're going to behave ourselves otherwise. Whether to a king. That would be somebody at the top as the one in authority. 
That fellow has authority. Where did it derive from? Ultimately from God. God establishes nations. Whatever the individual is, good, bad, or whatever, he is an authority figure in your life as a Christian. You're to pray for him and to pray for these people. And if they're corrupt, they're corrupt. God will deal with them. He puts people in positions of responsibility, and if they act up, eventually they'll be brought down. Many, many examples of that. <clears throat> or to governors as sent by him. That's the, the top person. For the punishment of evildoers, the responsibility of the establishment chain of Can is to deal with citizens and people within the nation who are evildoers. We're not doing a real good job of that today. They're allowing these people to run amok. They're on college campuses, protesting, threatening Jews, very big time hate speech. They're doing it on those Ivy League schools, those long-standing on the East Coast like Columbia. They're out there saying death to the Jews. And, no, and, and, and everybody's waffling around as to what to do. Students who are Jews are in the college. They feel under a lot of pressure. They, they shouldn't have to. So we see the, this is breaking down around us. And the Bible says in the last days there will be this increase, increased lawlessness. This is a result of a number of things that are being allowed to happen by those that are supposed to stop it. They are, they are supposed to stop people from coming into a, a society that are illegal and don't follow the appropriate channels for citizenship. You can't have a nation and do that. It hurts the people in the nation. So these are just quick examples of the lawlessness that we're facing in America. We didn't used to do that. <clears throat> For the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. And he wants these Christians to be in the, in the category of those who do right. For such is the will of God. Uh, now that brings us to verse 15. For such is the will of God. One of the reasons we come to Maranatha Church is to find out what the will of God is. The directive will of God. Touching all aspects of our life, internally, externally. The will of God. It will prevail against all opposition and contradiction. So we want to know what the will of God is so we can live our lives under its blessing, the will of God. And so much is not the will of God. For such is the will of God. Thelema is a Greek word for will of God. That by doing right, the present participle from the verb good, agathopoeo, good, it's a compound, with good and right. Do good. Do what is right. You may silence the ignorance of foolish men. He didn't say, it's, it's a guarantee they're all going to say, hey, they're, they're good people. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that you may silence. To silence is the present infinitive of the verb fimao. Fimao means to silence the ignorance. Agnosia, the noun, found two times here in 1 Corinthians 13, 15, 34. <clears throat> the ignorance, afron, means foolishness or ignorance of man. One, Peter gives a reason for and adds to what has just been said. See, everything here in the Bible flows like a story. You don't sit down and watch a movie and start in the middle of it, usually. You don't start in the middle of a book or a treatise or anything you're trying to read and understand. 
you go through it. That's what we've been dedicated to. It's one of the hallmarks that sets us apart from the many. They do not. They bounce around. You've got to get it in context. Verse by verse. Book by book. Doctrine, pause, do a doctrine. And I'm never going to do any different. No way. I'm going to embrace the approach that's out there. You don't know what he's going to teach next Sunday. It's all bounced around. It may be good. It may be bad. It may be a mixture of stuff, but it never gets the continuity going. Tell me the whole story. This letter and this information by the Holy Spirit was revealed to the Apostle Peter to be written down and studied. Line upon line, as it says in the Bible, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's how you grow up. So this is, this is clarifying your responsibility to the outside world and their governing authorities, whether it's a low official all the way up the ladder. Peter gives a reason for and as to what has just been said. For such is the will of God refers back to the, 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 the injunction to submit to the governing authorities. Three, God's will for Christians is the same as for all men with respect to divine institution number four, nationalism. Nationalism worldwide is under attack by the elite. They don't like it. If God has established something in his word, the four divine institutions are for the entire human race. Volition, it's under attack. <laughs> don't get into that. Marriage, oh, I guess it's under attack. Family. We used to call it the nuclear family. Husband, wife, and two or three kiddos. And now nationalism. God separated the nations up because they can't behave all under one big umbrella. That was proved at the Tower of, uh, Tower of, uh, of Babel in the uh, book of Genesis. Everybody was told after the flood to spread out and go and establish nations and, and societies. What did they do? They rebelled. We're all going to stay here. And, we're going to, and God realized this was not going to be a good thing. Because all these STAs brought together with all the genius in them, he says there's nothing they wouldn't accomplish. So he just reached down in and changed everybody's language. So they couldn't talk to each other. And those that could talk to each other, he reprogrammed their brain computer with a new language. Could God do that? No, oh, you bet. They're, they're trying to do things today to mess with our brains. Big time. And that's why you'll have the mark of the beast eventually. That's why people are told up front, don't take it. Because they'll hack your volition. They do, they do not like free will. They want us all to be zombies, robots, externally with a chip in our head, running around doing this stuff. And there's going to be a bunch of people in the tribulation that are going to say, hell no, I'm not going there. You want to kill me? Knock yourself out. And I'm not going there. Because <clears throat> it's doomsville. I never understood that all these years. What's the mark of the beast? Why is it so bad? It's not some stupid tattoo. It's a satanic one at that. There's a bunch of dummies out there that's got those all over them. I saw one country western singer. It, I just shuddered. His name's Jelly Roll. <laughs> He's got a big cross here and all this crap on his face and all over and, and claims to be a Christian and, God, and doing God's will. Guess he had, I had read the Bible about that one, has he? It's amazing. I'm sorry. I got off track. No, I'm not sorry. That's silly. God's will for Christians is the same as for all men to respect the divine institution. All men are to obey the laws of the land and respect those appointed to administer them. The will of God is the standard of conduct required of believers before the authorities. Peter's teaching is that by doing right, Christians will expose the lie that they are subversive to Roman rule and good order. The Romans did enforce that, by the way. They didn't build a big, powerful empire by everybody just being chaotic and criminal. Yes, there was a lot of bad things they did, and their leaders included. 
But they realized you had to have law and order, and you had, you, without it, you can't have an economy. People, people feeling safe, going to work, coming home, doing these things that makes a vibrant civilization. Peter is, still has the accusation thrown at these early Christians in 2.12. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. We're the new Israel of God, by the way. Not to say the other one is permanently replaced. Hey, that's being taught out there too. Uh, somebody that was high in my estimation as a commentator on conservative issues isn't anymore. Carson Tucker. He met with a Lutheran minister in Gaza. He's on the wrong side. And, a Lutheran, and Lutheranism, historically, with Martin Luther, reformer, he got more and more radical in his anti-Semitism as he got further into his life. And that denomination bought into this. God's through with Israel, the Jews, the racial Jews. He's through with them forever, blah, blah, blah. You can basically do to them what you want to. That now it's the church and Israel blew it and they're, they're out of it for good. Well, they haven't read their Bible, but they don't care about that, do they? So he's interviewing this Christian Lutheran minister down in Gaza. And not one condemnation out of that guy's mouth about what happened October the 7th. When these Hamas monsters came up there and butchered these innocent people. Babies killed, killed, killed their parents and killed parents in front of their children, vice versa, did all this stuff uh, and cut open pregnant women cut their heads off, threw it around, and they're celebrating. And we've got universities in this country that sit, and the students in them and some of the professors that apparently think this is all right. So, when I, so, so that one conservative side I used to go to, they, they always have to jab the Jews. To hell with them. I'm done with them. They have some other articles that are useful, but I, I'm, not, I'm not listening to it. I'm separated from it. I'm sick of it. You want to justify this? Iran said today that we're going we're gonna to destroy Israel from the face of the earth. They're their top goo, their top. Try it. Just try it. You're not just fighting the Jews who are good at it. You're fighting God. And there's a whole bunch of nations that are going to perish in the day of his wrath. Because he promised Abraham that land and his descendants. They have to be two things. They have to be racially, and you can check the DNA, they have to be racially, and they have to be regenerate to ultimately enjoy the full, the full package. This is no other, no other race did he promise real estate to. I've gone over it in Genesis and other places where it describes the extent of this. So when they're out there chanting from the river to the sea, they want the land and they want the Jews out and they want them dead and, they, and then the Christians are next. It's a religion of hate. Genocide. No other way around it. And all these weaklings in this country won't get up and say it. And I'll probably get kicked off of YouTube for this one. I could care less. So a bunch of civilians in, in, in Gaza are getting killed as a result of the war because the, the Hamas shield themselves in hospitals and schools behind their own people. They don't give a damn about their own people. They don't care about them. And the Jews have bent over backwards to try to minimize collateral damage. Just like America always did, right? We always minimized collateral damage. We were good at that, weren't we? We did, we did a good job in Vietnam, didn't we? Protecting the civilians on the ground. I heard that they, that they I think I heard this. Well, it was, it was about the guy who dropped the atomic bomb on these, on these two Japanese cities. Men, women, and children. And it wasn't a military target. It just wiped them out. I don't know. 
I guess I'd be court-martialed. You want me to do what? When the war was obviously determined that this was over. We did it. Putin pointed that out. You're the only people that have ever dropped a nuclear bomb on another country of that magnitude. Yeah, we're real concerned about civilians, aren't we? I noticed that after this was over, they, they, they withdrew all the pictures. They didn't want people to see this, this atrocity. Uh, Peter's teaching is that by doing right, Christians will expose the lie that they are subversive to Roman rule and good order. Peter still has the accusations of 2.12 in view. We must be, we, what must be silenced is the reckless talk of that verse. Peter's confidence is that good works of Christians will bring some to salvation, even. Do you notice that, uh, that, they, may, that they may, it's a subjunctive of potential, they may, they may, uh, what was it? Uh, they, may they may glorify God in the day of visitation. The day of visitation is the judgment of the church. That's the day of visitation. That they'll glorify God. I looked closely at these Christians and I couldn't see any of these charges that were being at label that had any, any merit through all, all, the, all the Christian organization, their teachings or their behavior. They were out here calling for killing people and rebelling against everything or attacking pagan temples and carrying on. They weren't, they weren't doing any of that. They were just good citizens. And I, and I realized that our side was lying and I took a close look at what their beliefs, boom, I'm a believer. There, there's those kind of people that'll eventually say, well, if this has got so ridiculous. This slander, make up, made up stuff. You want to be around those kind of people? No. You look, you look at, you look into the subject matter with a fine tooth comb, and of course, prayer always helps to find out what the truth is. And don't worry about what other people are going to say. I wouldn't be anywhere if I did that, or I got to do everything to, to, you know, test the waters so that I'm not offending anybody with some doctrine. To hell with that. I'm going to go in there. I got to live with myself. And I got to get the crown. I can't do that. I can't shrink back from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Even at the loss of losing a good friend or someone else. Family members? No. We'll see you in phase three. Hope you, hope you reconsider Uh, Peter's best hope short of that is to shut the mouths of those who make trouble for the Christians. 11, the means are the same. Doing right corresponds to your good deeds in 2.12. 12, the only way to silence the ignorance of foolish men is with the help of the emperor's appointed representatives. At some point, they will affirm the good character of the Christian community. The ignorance of the accusers is their inability to appreciate the beliefs and practices of the Christians over against their pagan frame of reference. You believe what? There's a God for this, a God for that, and all this mess, and you, you, you can't even keep up with them? And some gods are good gods, and some gods are immoral, and some gods are this or that, deities, female, male, animals. You're worshiping rocks and animals. You know, like in India, sacred cows. We appreciate cows. But we're not going to fall down and worship them. What is that? Or some fish? These idols still around are in archaeology, all over, inscribed on walls and everything. When Paul came into Athens and evangelized there, that's the intellectual, high uppity, mucky, cultural Southern Greece. <clears throat> still has still has a lot of architecture that is still standing. They made phenomenal pillars that stood the century through centuries of time. And when he was in the city, he said, I looked around and I saw the object of your worship and I saw a stone that had an X on it to the unknown God, one we missed. 
So we, 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 want, we, want, to, we want to placate him too, her. He says, I'm here to tell you what the unknown God is. The one you missed. That, 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 is over, that, uh, that washes all this other away. Ignorance here corresponds to the ignorance of the Christians before, before their conversion. Before we got doctrine, before we were saved, before we got on sound doctrine, we lived in ignorance. Fundy ignorance, whatever ignorance it was. Whatever, it was, whatever the brand name was of the church system you and I might have been in. Some worse than others, but still. It isn't, it, it, it isn't gonna get you the crown and to maturity. There are those that will tell you, you can just go anywhere. The leftist church. Really? Just as long as you go. Amazing. I guess I shouldn't be amazed. There's nothing wrong with ignorance of a particular tradition or subject, but on subjects on which one is ignorant, one ought not to speak. And foolish makes it clear that this was an ignorance which, which men were quick to speak of. Reckless speech was what made it, for Peter, the ignorance of foolish men. 20. Although agnosia is not derogatory, athon is. It's one thing to be ignorant of something. We all have been. I labored most of my ministry being big, ignorant with regard to the true doctrine of biblical cosmology. But I finally got on top of it. Because I had to. I couldn't get up here and say like one person said, what difference does it make? Well, when we start doing that with doctrines, what is it? We don't do that. We don't take a piece of the mind of Christ and divine viewpoint and say, oh, okay. I guess if you want to build a big church, you do that. <clears throat> this is about as close as Peter comes in trading insults with his reader's enemies, something he expressly forbids in chapter 3, verse 9. Peter is counting on Roman justice to resolve any problem raised by reckless charges leveled against the Christian community. 23, believers should take heart in the knowledge that what is good behavior in God's sight also benefits society, even more to the point, it will be recognized as such by the emperor and his appointed magistrates if they're looking carefully at it. We're not having any problems with those people. I wish all these people in their different belief systems were that way. We're not having any problems with them. They'll fight in the military. They pay their taxes. They work hard, raise their families. The Roman Gentiles of uh, the, the, the Roman Empire, they were big on family and stuff. Not that everybody followed all the rules. They got all, all these people. But they were big on that. They understood that you had to have that to have a strong civilization. You had to have, at the very bottom, a strong family unit, not chaos. Well, we've lost a little bit of track of that, haven't we? From what, in my youngest days, was an American deal. The nuclear family, married man and woman. My parents and others, they looked down on people that just lived together. They called it shacking up. Then they started giving these programs on TV, entertainment, comedy, where they're all living in this, okay. And they didn't glorify that divine institution like they should have. And now, it's off the rails. That's why the wrath of God's coming. Billy Graham used to say, if God doesn't judge America, and this is, this is decades ago, long before what we're watching, he said, if, America doesn't, if God doesn't judge America for its immorality, he ought to give Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. <laughs> well, he didn't get to live to see this one. He knows now. We are pushing this as A-OK. -okay. We, on children who do not have the ability because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, 
it's, it's trendy to come to school and say, I'm this. One teacher got reinstated in a courtroom because she was fired because she would not use the pronouns with the kids that, that wasn't a he or a she. She got fired. She went to court with it and she got reinstated. So if Johnny wants to be, come in there and refer to him as a girl, to hell with that. It's chaos. It's, it's a lie. It's, it's not reality. I heard cases in where some little girl come in there and says she's a cat. And they ask her a question and she goes, meow. It's so bad in England now that the teachers feel threatened by the students. You didn't have that in my day. <clears throat> in middle school, I had, a super, I had a superintendent of that school that had cut off a piece of a rubber hose. And I heard him use it once on some big jerk that shoved an elderly English woman, teacher. You could hear him screaming up and down that hall. He took him into the men's room. <laughs> What's that message sent to the rest of us? I think I'd better behave in class. I got sent to his office once and I was scared as, because I talked out of turn. He just raised his head, don't do it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, punishment fits, fits the crime. He understood that. You got to live in fear of consequences. Talking back to teachers, now they tell me they sit out there with their phones and their mother calls them while they're in class. We've lost it, haven't we? We've lost our dynamic. Whenever we had it at our best in our history, we've lost our dynamic and we're gonna lose our nation. Just like in the prophecies. I don't see any of the Christian fundamentalists talking about the rapture, second advent, coming to the Lord, even mentioned the United States. Well, they'll say we're bad, and we're gonna come under wrath. We're under wrath already. All these storms, earthquakes, and what have you, bam, bam, bam. There's a verse in Romans, the wrath of God is continually being revealed against the unrighteousness of men. Individually, collectively, and in places. God is very patient and lets it go a long ways. And then finally, the hammer comes down. He has to. <clears throat> Believers should take heart in the knowledge that what is good behavior in God's sight also benefits society. Point 23, even more to the point, it will be recognized as such by the emperor and his appointed magistrates. Two factors should be taken into account before this view is dismissed as naively optimistic. First, Peter is aware that his readers' difficulties are with unruly elements in the general population, not with the governing authorities. At this point, there was not a sponsored, state-sponsored persecution of Christians, which there were in the Roman Empire. In fact, there were 10 of them before Rome said, we're, we're Christian now under Constantine the Great. There were 10 of these things that, that attacked Christians in terms of that hardcore type persecution. It's in the book of Revelation, the church at Smyrna. He says, you're gonna go through 10 days of persecution. What's that? How, 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 what do you mean 10 days? 10 literal days. You're gonna face an attack by the, the, the governing people in this, in, this, in this city. It's gonna start on day one, and when, ten day, when the 10th day is up, it's lifted, because Christ controls history. This covers me every day and every way when I watch all this going on out here. He's got it all under control. And these people are soon, I'm not happy for this, but these people are gonna reap what they've been sowing. Everybody does. You act up, you act this way, and these are the consequences. Now, if, you, if you're reaping what you're sowing as mistakes or sins that, and, and failures as a believer, you, you got rebound and you, can get, and you reset yourselves. That's the grace of God. It's greater than that if you do your part. 
and I'm not going to point at you. I'll let, I'll let the Holy Spirit look at it and say, yeah, and you went and did that. What did you expect? Different consequences? No. But if you want to get, you want to settle and do it right and head in the right direction, hey, I'm, I, I'm number one for you. I am. I will not berate or degrade you at all. You just do the will of God. Yesterday is yesterday. <clears throat> uh, these authorities are the reader's first recourse and Peter's strategy is to view them in a positive light, which he does here. He doesn't say, oh, you've got all these corrupt officials here and there, of course. Second, he wants to foster in his readers a pattern of behavior that gives the lie to all possible charges of subversion, antisocial, and so forth. 28, in their service to God, they must be careful not to offend needlessly the civil authority. And if they treat you unfairly on occasion, you just let it roll off. Don't make a big issue of it. You just go on. Take it as undeserved suffering. Because there's always going to be people that's going to say something. A, 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 a lesser official. You know, if they knew you were a Christian or something. Might act differently towards you than to the next person. Okay. Okay. Let, let him go first. Whatever. Instead of making a big scene. In their service to God, they must be careful not to offend needlessly the civil authority. To start with the assumption that their responsibility to God and to the empire must inevitably come into conflict is the surest guarantee that this will be the case. Should it happen that these obligations conflict, the last recourse is before the head of the establishment chain of command. And it isn't Caesar, it isn't president, it isn't king, it is God. And God knows that. And if that person acts up and goes on a campaign against Christians, that person will suffer for it. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. May God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in Christ's name. Keep your notes for next time. <laughs>